Raise your hand if you're busy. Oh, I am. Howdy. If you're new here, I'm Devin Noel Lee, and I love inspiring you to write your family history easily. The tips on this channel will get you writing quickly and teach you how to take a draft and make it less boring. Now let's talk about those busy people in the audience. I recently talked with Brenda Hudson with Voice Fly, who loves helping families capture their stories. Her how-to book, Story by Story, 15 Projects to Write Your Family Legacy, is based on her successful legacy writing workshops. Today, she'll share three projects that help us write vignettes for our life in 30 minutes or less. Later in the video, I attempt to put the tips to the test on screen in a story called How a Magazine Article Changed My Life. You at Roots Tech had three different strategies. Could you remind me what they were so I don't mess them yeah, up? Yeah, yeah. I call them story projects, uh, okay. which is also how I, I teach writing. So I was thinking when I was developing my workshops that teach writing your family legacy, writing your family stories, um, how to do this in bite-sized chunks, right? Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about craft books and how they have, you know, if it's woodworking, uh, okay, woodworking is the medium, but they have all these different projects within the book. So you could make a birdhouse or you could, and then you advance to something, you know, a nice piece of furniture, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I have three different story projects. That's the way that, that I teach. So these different story projects are different kind of writing projects that give you different kinds of stories. Okay. So the first one that I talked about at Roots Tech was uh, something I called springboards. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of just a fancy name for a writing prompt. It's either a question or a sentence statement that gets you going. Mm -hmm. A springboard, like you're springing into the diving pool. Sure. Um, it's a place to get you started. And so then the second one was captured moments, which are really great, you know, way to look at photos or, you know, sometimes the most precious moments in our lives that were never caught by photography, right? But we have them in our minds like they are a captured moment. So that's a story project where you're guided to recall that moment and mm -hmm. calling in all the senses to tell the story. And then third is uh, something that is called stepping stones, okay, which are, you know, those pivotal moments in your life where things get altered, kind of the, the points of rupture. Right. Yeah. In at Roots Tech, you call them the key moments that change your life, but they yeah. don't have, to, if I remember correctly, they don't have to be necessarily caused by you. They could be external influences mm -hmm. or experiences, mm -hmm. and then they could be something small. It doesn't, not, not necessarily okay, if a car crash, although those would be one of them, but they could be smaller little turning points. So I thought it would be fun mm -hmm. to work through a stepping stone with you. Would you help guide me? Because yes. I know one of the hardest things is you see these concepts, you go to the workshops, you get really excited and you go home and you don't know how to start. So how do we start knowing which stepping stone to choose to start writing with right away? Cool. Great question. Can I just add too that sure. um, I loved what you said about not necessarily being external or monumental things, mm -hmm. but they can also be kind of the quiet profound uh, realizations that you have about life like that. Something may have happened or you just, it occurs to you that life is this way and you've mm -hmm. changed your approach to life. So an inner realization could also be a stepping stone. Oh, that's a great tip. Yeah. And then I can't wait to get to your question, but I also have a couple of helpful criteria when you're thinking sure. about what your stepping stones might be in your life. Sure. So there, there are a couple questions that I suggest people ask themselves. So okay. the first is, did this event or realization irrevocably change my life? So did my life take a different path or a different track because of it? And then now, so is irrevocably negative necessarily? Because sometimes I hear that word and I think, oh, that was like negative. No, it can definitely be positive as well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yep. But it's changed. Okay. Different. And then secondly, is this event or realization, the stepping stone, is it still shaping my life as I'm living it today? Okay. So what do I write about? Where do I start? Mm -hmm. I always have my students start with a list. 
Okay. So I will just say, let's try and get to 12 different stepping stones in your life. So we're okay. going to take a couple minutes and just think about the things that they don't have to be in any order, just mm-hmm. kind of brainstorm. And then I always give the first one, which was I was born. So <laughs> that's your freebie to start. <laughs> that's and, <true. laughs> and then, you know, just a couple of minutes and people either keep going, they have a lot to say and mm-hmm. others might struggle to get to 12. 12 isn't a magic number, but it's something to to strive for. So just having them reflect back on their lives, they're, they're coming up with stepping stones. And I ask them to like, give your stepping stones kind of a title. Okay. Like I was born. <laughs> so that would be the first step. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Well, when I was watching your presentation, the first thing that came to my mind was how a magazine changed my life. So would that be your title? A magazine changed my life, would you it say? It will be my working title. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I studied journalism in college. And so we always have a working title. And Very then the cool. editor always comes with a title later. It's not always what your working title was. So I always start with a working title. So I have my list of 12 or less. We did my best. I now am picking one that I guess you just pick the one that stands out to you or you feel... Yeah. Drawn to? I feel like sometimes when you, well, first of all, I would have you like look at your list. And if it, they're written vertically, it's amazing. Sometimes people will read their list of stepping stones and it's like a beautiful poem of their life. Oh. Just okay. so that I would say could be a standing, a standalone little story. Cool. Your stepping stones. And it could be you individually. Uh, also, people do it for their families. Okay. So, um, but yes, look at your look at your list. Is there one that calls out? Like sometimes there's one that just has an energy to it. And that energy might be also the one like, I don't want to touch that one. Uh-huh. Sometimes that's the one to go with too. True. But anyway, choose True. one. Okay. And then I would write your working title on the top of, of the page. Okay. And there's two different approaches. If you're for people who are really quite nervous about writing, I would ask them to just think about that stepping stone, like what happened, who was involved, where is a sense of place, an important part of this stepping stone? Was there kind of a lesson learned? Again, going back to springboards, breaking that down into a couple of maybe just two or three little short prompts. Okay. Um, So that that could almost be like note taking. Okay. Just to ground you and kind of relive, Mm -hmm. relive that moment. So it almost feels a little bit, um, since I did study journalism, it feels like the main questions a journalist asks when they're approaching a topic, the who, the what, the when, the why, the how, but I also throw in background. What's the background? What's the context of it? You know, so the magazine changed my life. So there would likely be some kind of context behind that as well, but you could definitely articulate the who, the what, the when, the why, the how. Um, And I guess you would pull in maybe some senses too, since it's especially if it's your story, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. Great points. Okay. Um, but that initial note taking, you know, wouldn't have it so that you're trying to cover everything. in right. the note taking. Yeah. Just a little like a dive, a, a, a way in. Mm-hmm. And so usually when they do that, there is something even in those notes that further pulls them in. And I okay. would say start there. And now you're going to set your timer and really just tell the story the best you can. I I also encourage trying it in the first person present tense as if it's happening now. Oh, okay. Some people don't like doing that, but it is a way to make it feel immediate Mm -hmm. and as if you're reliving it, which can help with the details too. If you still fall into the mixed tense, it's a a rough draft and it's okay to switch between your tenses. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Don't get hung up on that. Keep going. And um, then I would say too, because people always are like, well, what if I get stuck or I'm in the middle of it and I don't know what to say? Um, I just really encourage you to keep the hand moving, whether you're writing in longhand or if you're typing. I have a, I have a, a couple of my students who, who type TikTok, TikTok, <laughs> and it just keeps their brain engaged rather than stopping and looking out the window, hoping for some inspiration out there. <laughs> um, just stay on the page and trust that, you know, your mind is going to keep going. 
Yeah. You had mentioned some people need to take little notes before they start writing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes going back to those notes, like, oh yeah, I didn't, I didn't talk about that. I thought it wouldn't just naturally weave that in. Mm -hmm. Now having those notes, because I hate outlines. I really hate outlines. (laughs) But my husband tells me whether it's a blog post or it's a video script or even my memoir, when I didn't have an outline or little notes, I, I wouldn't go anywhere. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I know. Yeah, I, I understand completely. I like the more organic. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm a brain dump kind of person, mm-hmm. but I like the idea of brain dump a bunch of different thoughts and then go free and then circle back to, yeah. oh, I, did I include that? Did I happen to say where I was when I got that magazine or what was on the cover? I just told you a magazine changed my life. But, yeah. you know, when I started free writing now, it's like, oh, yeah, I need to pull that in. Okay, so let's practice maybe. So what what do I need to do? I gave you my title. What's the next step? So I talked about note taking. Okay. You seem like a pretty go-to writer. So okay. if you're feeling comfortable, I mm-hmm. would just say take your working title. Okay. Take a deep breath. Okay. We're going to set the timer for just a couple know, minutes. Just a couple minutes. Okay. And just imagine you're telling this story to someone who's so interested to know about what happened to you with this magazine. Okay. I was at Blaine Junior College in Brenham, Texas, and I had been there for about a year and a half, and it was time to start figuring out where am I going to go to college. Prior to going to Blaine College, I was going to go to the University of Houston and go back home and live with my parents. But I happened to go to church one day. And mind you, I wasn't an active church goer. So to be at church on like a Wednesday night was odd. (laughs) What is even odder is why I was talking to two missionaries. I can't tell you what they look like. I know they wore name tags and a suit. That's it. (laughs) Don't ask me anything else because I can't remember. But as we got chit-chatting, they handed me a magazine. And it was for members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. They may remember the magazine called The New Era. So it was for young adult people. And on the cover was a very attractive young man holding a Book of Mormon and a Texas A&M helmet. Mind you, I never thought I would go to A&M. However, Mm -hmm. as I started reading the article about him and a couple other articles about College Station and coming to Christ in College Station, all of a sudden, I was not going to University of Houston, I changed my plans and I went to Texas A&M University. So how'd I do? (laughs) That is a pivotal moment. I love how you started with the sense of place, like where you were and Mm -hmm. you went from there and so many good details. Oh, thank you so much. I like having that feedback. Isn't that great? (laughs) Yes, it's wonderful. I was right there with you every every moment. So yeah. And And I didn't feel nervous telling that story, you know, granted, uh, (laughs) just a little side note. The guy was married when I got to A&M, but I married my husband. Oh, it all worked out. They were friends, actually. (laughs) That's quite a bonus. It was a great bonus. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I get from what I just told you all the way to that point, but that's a little. Lots of know. prompts in the middle. True. <laughs> yeah. Lots of stepping stones, right? That's right. Yes. And captured moments and stuff. Well, Brenda, is there anything else you want to share with us on how to write um, family stories in 30 minutes of our left that we haven't covered? These different techniques, these different story projects, you can share them with your family members and that they can write their own too. And so if you want a collection of stories with multiple voices, it's a really easy way to get in. And again, just give them a prompt with, tell them you've got 10 minutes, just write whatever. So it doesn't have to be a huge undertaking. Um, It would be kind of fun to do maybe at a family reunion or a holiday when you're looking for activities, quiet time activities, to just do a writing of some kind. That would be kind of fun. If you are a viewer and you take that challenge, let us know how it goes. So Brenda, I have so enjoyed all of your tips and your tricks and the practice writing session we did. How can people reach out to you and learn more about your workshops and so forth? 
Yes. If you go to my website, voicedlife.com, my offerings are there. I have a book uh, with all my story projects in it called Story by Story um, and my teaching. And um, I'd love to hear from you at any time. If you have questions or if you want to let me know about your family story successes, I always love to hear those too. I hope you enjoyed that session with Brenda. She shared some additional tips I've reserved for follow-up quick tip videos. Stay tuned for those video releases on this channel by subscribing and signing up for our newsletter reminders. You'll also get a free writing guide if you will check the link in the description box. Until next time, know that you can write your family histories. And if you need more tips and tricks on how to do that, check out the video right up here.